Luis Diaz signed for Liverpool from Portuguese side Porto in late January this year and has already scored his first Premier League goal. Despite all the hype surrounding Liverpool's new number 23, not many are aware of what the Colombian went through in his life before finally making it to Liverpool. This is the story of how Luis Diaz survived poverty, malnutrition and several rejections to becoming the 2021 Copa America's joint top scorer with Argentinian captain Lionel Messi and a serious competitor to Liverpool's Sadio Mane. I give you the inspirational story of Luis Diaz from poverty to Liverpool. Our story begins in Barrancas, Colombia, where on the 13th January 1997, Luis Diaz was born to his mother, Selenis Marulanda, and father, Luis Manuel Diaz. He grew up with his parents and two brothers in a village in Barrancas, in a town very close to a mining settlement. His community and family was very poor, which led to several cases of malnutrition, and unfortunately, Diaz couldn't escape it. The desert-looking environment was home to the largest open-pit coal mine in the whole of Latin America, Carijon, and as a result of this, the town was usually disturbed by a pounding sound, and that's not all. Because of the presence of the coal mine, the town's Rancheria River was drying up, thereby resulting to a massive shortage of water in the community. Wow, imagine playing football without water. In all of these harsh circumstances, Diaz had only one thing to turn to as a source of escapism, and that was football. Football was his everything. As a child, he was practically obsessed with Ronaldinho and was said to have mimicked every single move Ronaldinho made during his matches. He attended his dad's football school where he was the most outstanding student in his age group. His dad, Luis Manuel Diaz, was an aspiring footballer back in the day but sadly could not make it. And because of that, he was extremely supportive of his son's football aspirations despite initial refusal from his mother who was more interested in seeing him focus on school. She would scold him and give him an ultimatum that if he didn't finish his schoolwork, he won't kick football anymore. And as you could imagine, all Diaz wanted to do was to play football, so naturally, he hit the books. At the age of 11, when he was done with primary education, his family asked him what he wanted to focus on, and without thinking twice, he chose football in a heartbeat. Diaz and his dad began to work, and thanks to all the Ronaldinho skills he'd been practicing, he easily stood out from the rest. And you know, football fans absolutely love dribblers like look at this guy go although his father was the one running the football school he was at he wasn't complacent or expecting preferential treatment he constantly pushed himself harder and harder until eventually his hard work was rewarded during his teens lucha was selected to take part in a 22 player selection trial where the selected players will represent the colombian national team in a south american contest his invitation came because of his Wei Yu ethnicity and this at the time was the biggest step the Colombian was about to take to becoming a pro footballer. Ahead of the tournament, questions were raised regarding Diaz's eligibility to compete in the tournament due to his unusual skinny appearance which was as a result of his malnutrition. Many people looked down on him because of his appearance which they thought was due to an illness of some sort. Diaz made sure to prove his doubters wrong and soon made them eat their words as his sensational display in the tournament caught the attention of almost everybody watching, as he even managed to impress Colombian football legend Pibo Valderrama as the former Colombian playmaker promised to find a better team for Diaz. He got in touch with the owner of Barranquilla FC telling him to please try him, that skinny guy is very good. Lucho was soon invited for a trial at the club and boy he did not disappoint. But there was just one problem though, his appearance. After joining Barranquilla, he was told to gain 10 kilos. His mother immediately started working on that as she found a diet that only Tour de France champions eat and Diaz soon found himself consuming greater quantities of goat meat along with a special pasta and multivitamins and then boom, he gained the weight. He massively impressed during his time at Barranquilla and would very soon start to attract attention from many bigger clubs, one of which was Atletico Junior, which would eventually sign him in 2016. He was absolutely incredible there also and became an integral part of them winning two Categoria Primera A titles, the Copa Colombia and the prestigious Superliga Colombian, scoring 20 goals in 108 matches along the way. 
He once again attracted massive attention from bigger clubs but this time from Europe as Russia's Zenit St. Petersburg and Portugal's FC Porto were greatly interested in the winger and in the end he opted to sign for Porto after receiving advice from his Colombian role models James Rodriguez and Radamel Falcao. It was at Porto where he displayed absolutely unreal performances. He was quick, unstoppable and full of trickery just like his idol Ronaldinho and alongside teammates such as Alex Telles. Pepe and Musa Marega, he managed a total of 14 goals in 50 appearances and won the league title along with the Taka de Portugal. In the 2020-21 season, he only managed 11 goals in 47 appearances and gradually started to build quite a reputation for himself in the league. At the end of the season, during the Copa America, he shone the brightest for Colombia as he helped his nation to a third place finish, scoring four goals in the process, thus sharing the golden boot with Argentinian superstar Lionel Messi, and everything went up from there. In only the first half of this current campaign, before his move to England, he surpassed his best goal scoring tally at Porto as his 16 goals in 28 appearances prompted serious attention from many Europe's top clubs. His Porto side were drawn in the group of death in the Champions League alongside new club Liverpool, Atletico Madrid and AC Milan and still managed to impress as the Reds apparently decided they had seen enough for them to cash in on the 25 year old. He has now been given the extremely tough challenge to break up Liverpool's legendary trio in order to insert himself into the mix. Seeing that he's a left winger, many are naturally saying or should I say Many people currently view him as a massive threat to the recently crowned African champion Sadio Mane. Diaz will surely add a new dynamic to this Liverpool side just like the way Diogo Jota did. He is similarly unpredictable like Mohamed Salah but with him comes a much more wider range of skills and tricks, similarly to Ronaldo during his early days at Manchester United. With the way his former club Porto previously set up with him in the team, he wasn't really required to press that much, at least not to the level in which Jurgen Klopp expects from his front line, but he has gradually started to show that he's extremely capable of performing this function. With Manchester City recently slowed down in their ruthless title charge by an amazing display from Spurs at the Etihad recently, leaving the title race wide open, Liverpool are surely looking to avoid what had crippled their title chances last season by threatening areas where they can be a lot vulnerable when hit by injuries. Diaz is an extremely hot and credible contender to Sadio Mane and with what we know about Mane so far, he shines the brightest when challenged. Just look at what he did with Salah in the 2018-19 season. If Sadio raises his level, it will also require Diaz to raise his. And this constant, more importantly, healthy competition between this Liverpool side could eventually make them one of the most dangerous teams in Europe. There you have it. This has been the story of Luis Diaz. His story is a direct reminder to those facing hardships that no matter where you come from, you too can make it if you put in the right amount of effort and dedication, plus make sure you absolutely love what you're doing and you eventually get there. If you've made it this far in this video, I'd like to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Well, that is all from me today, really curious to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like the video, share the video and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Take care.